Coming up, a kid's guide to banking. What are banks and why do we use them? We'll explain. Then, lessons learned. It's been three years since the pandemic started. We'll take a look at what we've learned. Also, luck of the Irish. We're heading to the Emerald Isle for our pop quiz this week. Plus, backstage pass. Bam, Jackson. Here we are. Here we go. Our pal Jackson Daly takes us behind the scenes at The Voice with coach and country star Blake Shelton. Here's where I've been sitting since uh, 2011. I got my speakers built into the chair. Feel that switch? It's a heater. And sisterhood. This one of a kind Girl Scout troop is helping girls connect and not feel alone. I love Troop 6000. I'm glad that I'm in it because it is very special to me. The best thing about being a Girl Scout is that you get to learn about things that you never knew before. We've got the details ahead. This is NBC Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. It's great to be with you. We have a super lineup today, including our picture of the week. We can't wait to tell you about these bear cub twins. And a little later on, what's in a name? We'll take a look at some popular names for our four-legged friends. That should be a fun one, and we just might have a special guest joining me in our studio. I'll tell you about that later. But first, let's begin with one of the top stories we're covering this week. There has been a lot of talk about banks and how safe they are after the collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank in California. It has some grown-ups a little bit nervous, and it got us thinking just what are banks all about. Our good friend Stephanie Rule explains. Hey there, Lester. I'm really glad we're talking to kids about this because banks can sound really scary and overwhelming, but guess what, guys? They're actually really simple. A bank is a place where you go to put your money away for safekeeping, but it's also a place where you can go to get a loan, like when you ask your parents for your allowance ahead of time. So let's break it down. Think of a bank like a piggy bank, but for adults. You might even recognize a few of the big ones, like Bank of America, Wells Fargo, or Chase. It's a place where you can put your money and know that it's there when you need it. Banks offer all different kinds of ways to save. Checking accounts, savings accounts, and sometimes they even pay you to let them hold your money. That's called interest. Wouldn't it be nice if every time you put a dollar in your piggy bank, you got an additional five cents? Bank accounts make it really easy to pay bills or get cash at ATMs whenever you want, so you can use it to buy something or go out to eat. And with a bank account, it's an easy way to save money, just like you do with yours at home. Put the money in and only use it when you need to. But how does a bank pay you to keep your money there? Remember how I said they also offer loans? Banks take the money you put in your account and then lend out a portion of it to someone else who needs the money. Maybe they're starting a new business or buying a home. Banks charge people a fee for that loan and then give you part of it. That's the interest you're getting for giving your money to the bank. Because banks use the money you give them, they have to follow all kinds of rules so your money is safe and you can get it out when you want. Recently, some people who had money at a couple of banks got worried that they wouldn't be able to get their money back when they wanted. But the government doesn't want people to worry about things like that. So it stepped in to make sure there wouldn't be problems. That's because banks are really important. They help people start businesses, or buy a car, or save for a time when they don't work anymore. Governments use banks too. In fact, Lester, nearly every household in America has a bank account. It's a good way to prepare for emergencies that might come up, or when there's that extra special thing you've got your eye on but need to save up to buy it. Stephanie, thanks so much for that great explanation. Meantime, this month marks three years since the pandemic started. Can you believe it? We know it hasn't been easy, especially on you kids, but we have learned a lot since those early days of COVID-19. Let's get details now from our good pal, Dr. John Torres. When the coronavirus first surfaced, it was new to all of us. How can coronavirus get spread? The World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a pandemic on March 11, 2020. That was a scary time for everyone. And you guys had questions. I'm going back to school. Do I have to wear a double mask? My question is, with information going around, who can we listen to? How long do you think the COVID-19 will last? And when do you think it will end? My question is, when will COVID-19 end? 
We tried to answer your questions as best we could, but doctors like me and scientists around the world were learning too. Why? Because COVID-19 was something the world had never experienced before. I think we're in a much better place than we were because we understand the virus better and we've developed good ways of uh, dealing with it in terms of protecting ourselves ahead of time with vaccines that we've now developed and with having new treatments becoming available to handle an infection when it does happen. Remember, a pandemic is when a disease spreads rapidly around the world. A pandemic ends when the cases drop and become steady in most countries. It's convenient and a lot of people want to say the pandemic's over, but as a virologist, I don't think the virus has gotten that memo. And it's still with us. We don't need to be fearful of it, but we need to take appropriate measures to deal with it. Those measures continue to include getting vaccinated, covering our mouths when we cough or sneeze, and practicing good hand washing. You're supposed to be washing your hands at least for 20 seconds during COVID-19, or sing a song. What song do you guys sing? Most people, I think, sing Happy Birthday twice. I like the ABC song, the A, B, C, D. And at the end of it, you know, won't you sing along with me? That's about 20, 21 seconds. It's a good time to wash your hands and sing that song. Right now, Omicron and its subvariants make up the majority of the coronavirus cases in the U.S. For the most part, people have very mild symptoms. That's much different than the original coronavirus. Although we are three years into the pandemic and some parts of the country are easing back on restrictions like mandatory masking, we all still need to keep on our toes in case new, more worrisome variants come around. One of the biggest things we learned is vaccines work. The COVID-19 vaccine was a big success during the pandemic. And just like the flu vaccine, doctors believe we are moving towards getting a shot once a year. And it might even be one that's combined with the flu shot. So that way, you'll only need one shot in the fall to protect you from both COVID and the flu. And remember, we told you about antibodies. Antibodies are what our bodies use to fight off germs like coronavirus. Picture your body with its own special army. When a virus gets inside our body, our immune system acts like an army and attacks the germs to get rid of them. It uses antibodies, kind of like soldiers that are specially trained to attack that one type of germ. Once the germs are gone, the antibodies go back into a kind of resting mode. The soldiers retreat. They wait, constantly watching to see if it shows up again, at the ready to defend if needed. If the germ does show up again, then the body is ready with specially trained antibodies that are prepared to quickly get rid of it. That's why vaccine shots are so important to keep us healthy. Vaccines help train those soldiers even before germs are around. So the first time it does see a new germ, it knows how to attack it and get rid of it before it makes us sick. And in these past three years, we've learned a lot. We've learned about the virus, about pandemics, about how to keep safe and what to do if we get sick. But mostly we've learned about ourselves, our health, and that we can do this even though at times it might be tough because we're all doing it together. And while we're at it, we're having a little fun along the way. Dr. John Torres, thanks so much. This week, millions of kids and grown-ups are marking St. Patrick's Day, a time to celebrate the Irish culture. And speaking of Ireland, how about a pop quiz? The question, what musical instrument is Ireland's national symbol? Is it A, the fiddle, B, the harmonica, or C, the harp? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Okay, that's a few seconds. Time's up. The answer is C, the harp. Did you know that Ireland is the only country in the world to have a musical instrument, the Irish harp, as its national symbol? The harp has been considered a very important instrument dating back to ancient times. It makes a beautiful sound. Now to our Inspiring Kids series and a special Girl Scout troop helping girls forge friendships and a whole lot more. Let's get to tales now from our friend Kristen Dahlgren. It's a one-of-a-kind sisterhood. The best thing about being a Girl Scout is that you get to learn about things that you never knew before. So it's kind of like school, but in a fun way. Girl Scout Troop 6000 is unique. While the troop may look like any other Girl Scout troop on the surface, 
there's something special that ties them together. I love Troop 6000. I'm glad that I'm in it because it is very special to me, special to everyone else. Each girl in Troop 6000 comes from the New York City shelter system. The troop itself designed to serve families living in temporary housing. It really is about acceptance, it's about being heard, being seen, being understood, uh, and being able to share without that judgment. Shelters, it can be very dark and very lonely, and Girl Scouts, it brought so much joy to me. Launched in 2017 by a single mother of five who had lost her home, Giselle Burgess sought to give girls living in shelters a safe place and an opportunity to reach their full potential. Once these Girl Scouts get settled into Troop 6000, they really do go out there and break that stigma. When you're in a troop of girls that have experienced something so similar to you, you kind of just like instantly bond. Bonding is key. I was excited to meet new people and make friends. Being a part of Troop 6000, it makes the girls feel confident to be in a shelter just knowing that they're not the only kid that's going through that. Recently, Troop 6000 got together for World Thinking Day, a day of celebration and a chance to bring the girls together. It was the troop's largest event since the pandemic began. A certain group of Girl Scouts focuses on one country. They like to present them out. The great part is when you have free time to just walk around and you get to see all the different countries. All fees, uniforms, trips, and program materials are provided to Troop 6000 girls at no cost. They also have a team of volunteers on hand. No matter where you're from, no matter what your living circumstances are here in New York City, we will make sure that you have the same opportunities as any other girl. Troop 6000 also supports girls after they and their families transition from temporary to permanent housing, making sure they continue to have access to Girl Scouting no matter where they live. I think the best thing personally for me is the sister with the and like it's just this connection that's astronomical. And it's that power of connection and friendship helping make the world a better place for these girls. Get ready for the time of your life. You're going to have a lot of fun. Make new friends, but keep the old one is one and the other's goal. Kristen, thanks very much. Let's head to California now for our picture of the week. The San Diego Zoo welcomed a pair of Andean bear cubs in December, and this week the baby bears are ready to leave the den. The twin cubs spent the last three months in their private habitat with their mom, Alba. Now they have ventured into the guest-facing habitat at the San Diego Zoo, but are expected to stay pretty close to their mom, at least until their first birthday. They are the first set of twin Andean bears born at the San Diego Zoo in nearly 30 years. Did you know Andean bears are the only bear species native to South America? They're also the last remaining relative of the extinct giant short-faced bear. Now let's head up the California coast to Los Angeles, where a new season of NBC's The Voice just got underway. And for all you fans of Team Blake, some not-so-good news. This season will be Blake Shelton's last. Our pal Jackson Daly, whose dad Carson Daly is the host and one of the producers of The Voice, was invited to take our cameras backstage to find out why the country star is calling it quits and the secrets behind those famous red chairs. Hey Lester, we are here at stage 30 in the Universal Backlot. This is where The Voice happens, and I had a chance to sit down with Blake Shelton to talk about his last season at The Voice. Ready? So then this is the coach walk, long walk, and then this will be the scene that you see where it's like, welcome Kelly Clarkson, and then bam, Jackson, here we are. Here we go. It's a show full of baritones, bass, and belting out the tunes. The voice gives unknown singers a chance to compete for a top prize and a record deal. Why can't you see and now after 23 seasons, coach Blake Shelton is saying so long, but trying to end on a high note. Pick me, Riley. Well, Blake, thank you for sitting down with me right now. You and my dad have been on The Voice throughout it all. Blake Shelton, this is your last season. This is it, buddy. Why are you leaving him? You know, when I first started on this show, I think you were one. And I felt like I just wanted to stay here long enough uh, that I felt like, you know, you were, you were grown enough oh, to make man. it on your own without my influence. Blake Shelton is the longest serving coach on The Voice and has won the most times. You've been a coach for so long. What does it take to be on Team Blake? A sense of humor. I, I, you know, people that, that don't take themselves too, too serious, 
uh, seem to be the ones that I have the best and closest connection to. So I think making it on Team Blake, you got to be able to to uh, not take yourself so serious, laugh. So the age to try out is 13. I'm 13 now. Yeah. What would you say to kids my what age? What I would say to you is yeah. music's probably not your going to be your okay. path, Jax. I've heard you sing, and please, for the sake of your own like self self worth, don't put yourself through that. You know. All right. Well, what would you say to kids my age, not me, who actually can sing? Okay. Who want to try out for the world? I say come on because uh, you know the the chances of, of of making it on this show are, are, are slim, but there's no way to audition for this show and especially make it on this show without learning a bunch of stuff, you know? And that's what I love about it. Artists like me who've been doing this for a million years, there's, there's just never really been a path to pass along all the stuff I've learned over the years to younger people. And now I'm able to pass along some things that I've learned along the way, and especially mistakes I've made along the way. So that, that's been uh, probably my favorite part about being a coach on here. And, and the reason I would say, come try out, you know, give it a shot. Convincing the coaches through song to give them a shot is the first step in this singing competition. And it all comes down to getting them to turn their chair. Here's all that anybody ever cares about. They want to know about the, the chairs. chairs, right? Now, sadly, this is the uh, part of the season where the button has been uh, removed. I know, I know, I know you wanted to do this. The, this, little bit. the chair spin thing. So there's no buttons on, on, on the chairs at this point in the show because we're now in our uh, playoff mode. Here's where I've been sitting since uh, 2011. Now it's not the exact same chair that well, I get. A, I get a new model every couple of years. Get you know, upgrades. The upgrades, exactly. Yeah. Look at this. I got my so I can hear what's speakers. going on. I got my speakers built mm -hmm. into the chair, and uh, there's LED lights built in. Oh, it uh, says your name. Got my name name wow. tag on the back, uh, and it's built in a way so that if I ever get fired midway through the season, they just type in a new name and it's right there. So it's not like built into the chair yeah. because that could happen. Let's face it. Let me show you one Definitely. other major secret about these chairs. Underneath here, you can feel right there. Feel that switch? Oh yeah. It's a heater. It's heated. Because it gets so cold in here, sometimes you have to turn on wow. the the seat heater. And it's just like in a you know fancy car or whatever, and it'll it'll warm you up. I never in all my time being on this show never have turned that on. My, my wife will have it on the whole time on maximum heat. Wow! I never and knew so that. up here, oh. this is where all the magic happens, right? So this is where they perform. They get, and it's kind of cool. You know, they can sing to the coaches if they want, but they also have the audience all the way around if it's weird singing to us, and then. Here's where the band is set up, and it's pretty crazy, you know. I, I would have never guessed watching the, the other singing shows out there that, you know, that bands really are playing live because it's perfect, you know. But yeah. this band really does. They set up, they play live, and uh, that's it. That's where the magic's made, buddy. This is it. It's massive. So many lights. And then your your dad has a has a secret room, too, that he, he hangs out in. Yeah, you want to go see it? I do. Okay. So this is where uh, Carson Daly uh, actually sits, and while the people are performing, he can watch the uh, performance on his oh, screen yeah. right here. He keeps his notes, so he knows uh, a little bit of information about each contestant and go out there and, and act like he knows what he's talking about. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. Kind of like you do with this show. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. He always tells me, fake it till you make it. Right. You're nailing it. Yeah, that's what you've done yeah. for the past. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do our little goodbye here. Well, Blake. Thank you for talking to me. Well, buddy, I'll still promise to be a major part of your life. I'm Jackson Daly for Night Me News Kids Edition. Back to you, Mr. Holt. Jackson, thanks very much, my friend. We should note The Voice airs Mondays and Tuesdays on NBC. Finally, we spend a good amount of time in this program telling you about the good work some of our four-legged friends do, from facility dogs to support dogs to dogs who retrieve bats and more. But did you ever wonder where the inspiration for our pets' names come from? Our friend Callie Lichter takes a look. Hi, Lester. With millions of names to choose from, finding the perfect one can be tough. We are here at Laurel Canyon Dog Park to speak to dog owners about how they came up with the perfect name for their furry friends. 
From Schnauzers to St. Bernard's, every dog needs a name, and the possibilities are endless. When dog owners Tekla and Graham were naming their two pups, Merlin and Rally, they first thought of their favorite things. We were kind of trying to just find like a cool, I don't know, I guess like fantasy name because we like kind of fantasy stuff and we just kept going back to Merlin. Graham also wanted a name that reminded him of his career as a stunt driver. So they named their second dog Rally. I've always loved rally racing. It's been kind of my happy place. Which is the perfect name for her because Graham says. She is a speed demon. Favorite things can include a lot like a favorite place. The two of us met about two years ago, and we met in this town called Hilo, which is on the big island of uh, Hawaii. Kira and Will adopted Hilo a few months ago. As soon as it was said, we knew like that was her name. It's just felt right. If inspiration doesn't come from a real place, maybe it can come from a pretend one. Like Birdie Bots, this 11-year-old Brugs named after the candy beans in Harry Potter. The American Kennel Club suggests naming your dog a two-syllable name, like Sadie or Rocky. Long names like Sir Barks a lot may be difficult for the dog to understand and confuse them, but I don't think Birdie Bots here minds. Names from pop culture have topped the dog name charts in the past few years. In 2022, Mirabelle from the movie Encanto was top dog. In the last few years, Grogu and Mando from The Mandalorian and T'Challa from Black Panther have also been popular pet names. Even cartoons can provide inspiration, like Pitbull's Evie and Bubbles. Bubbles right here, I named her that because of the Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> but whether it's Bubbles or Merlin or something else, the perfect name for your dog is the one you choose. Kelly, thanks very much. And as I hinted at the top of the broadcast, we have a special guest today. This is my dog, Lucy. Lucy is a six-year-old Labradoodle. And how did we name Lucy? Well, there was a very popular comedian and actress uh, back when I was growing up called Lucille Ball, and she was famous for her red hair. And when we met Lucy as a pup, her hair was very red. It's kind of lightened up now as she's gotten to be middle age. <laughs> middle age. Anyway, speaking of Labradoodles, two of our viewers, Garrett and Rory from New Hampshire, sent us this video. Take a look. Hi, kids. This is our chocolate Labradoodle, Lester, named after our favorite news anchor, Lester Holt. I love that. I love that. I love Labradoodles. You couldn't, you didn't, you didn't see, you know, she didn't see that. She didn't know. So I'll play it back for her later on. But Garrett, that's great. Thanks so much. And maybe one of these days we can get our Labradoodles together for a play date. You'd like that? Yes, you'd like that. I know what you'd really like is this treat. All right, well, that's going to do it for us. Parents, just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com. You can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. And just a program note, you can catch Nightly News Kids Edition this Saturday on NBC. Check your local listing for the time in your area. Thanks for watching, and remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long. Do we?